What's up everybody? Tree City West here with Tree City Trading. Today we're going to be setting up an X1 node on the testnet using the new Fastnet update. But first, let's talk about the difference between a node and a validator. In a decentralized blockchain network, a node is any device that maintains and updates a copy of the blockchain. It ensures the integrity of the blockchain data across the network by validating and sharing the updated data. An important aspect of the node is that it stores a copy of the blockchain locally. This is powerful because it means you can store an entire history of the blockchain right on your local machine. And if you're savvy with scripting language like Python, you can write scripts to query the blockchain data directly in your local environment, enabling a multitude of possibilities from analyzing transaction patterns to monitoring the health of the network in real time. So that's what a node is, but what's a validator? A validator is a special type of node with additional responsibilities. Not only do validators perform all the functions of a node, but they also participate in the consensus protocol. They have the power to validate and add new transactions to the blockchain. Because of this, validators require a high level of trust within the network. Validators often receive rewards or incentives for their contribution, but with greater power comes greater responsibility. In most networks to be a validator, you have to lock up a large amount of token. On Ethereum, you need 32 Ether to be a validator. And on PulseChain, you need 32 million Pulse to be a PulseChain validator. And that brings us to validator penalties and slashing. These are mechanisms that ensure validators act in the best interest of the network. Validator penalties can be minor fines that a validator may incur for things like being offline or not performing their duties effectively or slashing. Slashing, on the other hand, is a severe penalty where a validator can lose a significant portion of their stake tokens for malicious actions like double signing transactions or attempting to attack the network. Both penalties and slashing mechanisms are critical to maintaining the network security and integrity. These deter validators from acting against the network's interests. So basically, while all validators are nodes, not all nodes are validators. The key difference lies in their roles and their responsibilities. A node maintains a share of the blockchain data, while a validator, in addition to maintaining the data, validates and adds new transactions to the blockchain. So today we're going to be setting up an X1 Fastnet node, not a validator, just a node. And there's many different ways to set up a validator, but basically you'll need a copy of Linux Ubuntu server. So the first step is to set up your Ubuntu server. According to the specs from Zensu, we're going to need Ubuntu 20.04. So we can head over to the Ubuntu.com download page and scroll down until we see Ubuntu server 20.4 LTS. Here we can click on the link to download the ISO. So now that we downloaded the ISO, which is a disk image file, file, we'll need to be able to boot to this file. What I did was took a USB flash drive and used the free tool called Rufus to create a bootable flash drive of the Ubuntu installation. Once Rufus created the bootable flash drive, I popped it in my laptop and set up the Linux Ubuntu server. So after downloading the Ubuntu ISO and using Rufus to create the bootable Ubuntu server installer on my USB flash drive, I rebooted the laptop, selected the USB device as the boot device, and went through the Ubuntu server installation. Along the way, I made sure to set up the internet connection, install the OpenSSH server, and set up the Docker app. Once I completed the installation, I restarted the laptop and it booted into Linux. I was then able to connect to the Ubuntu server using PuTTY, from my Windows machine. So at this point, I have my Ubuntu server running on my old laptop and I'm able to use PuTTY to SSH into it to configure it. Now I can begin using Zensu's instructions to set up the X1 Fastnet. So today we're gonna to be using the Docker-based installation. Personally, I think the Docker-based installation is a little easier to manage. If I need to upgrade, I can just download the new Docker and apply it to my setup. So now that I'm connected with PuTTY, I can go ahead and run the first command. Step one will be installing the Docker. The Docker installation package is available in the official Ubuntu repository. So during the installation, we install the Docker from the official repository. So we'll go ahead and run the first command. It's going to be apt update. Here you see it actually connects to the Ubuntu servers. It downloads the latest Docker update and applies the installation. Once the installation's finished, we're back at the command prompt. Next, we'll go ahead and install the prerequisite packages, which let apt use the packages over HTTPS. So we'll go ahead and copy the command, right click to paste. Let it run through the installation. We'll hit yes. Successfully runs through the installation. Once it completes, it takes us back to our command prompt. Next step in the instructions, we'll add the GPG key for the official Docker repository to the system. To do so, we'll go ahead and copy and paste the curl command. We got the okay, so the command ran successfully. Next, we'll run the command to add the Docker repository to the APT sources. It's gonna ask us if we wanna continue with adding the repository. We'll go ahead and hit enter. 
it downloads the repository from the Ubuntu servers, and now the update's applied. So now we can check the version of the Docker that we installed. We'll go ahead and paste this command, and it should give us the information about the packages that are installed. So finally, we'll run the command to install the Docker. It's asking us if we want to use the disk space. Go ahead and say yes. Okay, now the Docker app is successfully installed. We're back at the command prompt. We're ready to go. We can run this command to confirm that the Docker is set to run on system startup. You can see right here, the system's currently running. It's active. And we should be good to go there. So step two, we're going to install and run the node. Now this is the bread and butter. So full credit for this package goes to Zen community member Bach11. He created this Docker package, so big thanks to him. So to install the Docker package, we're going to actually download it from his repository. We'll go ahead and paste the command to do that. Now you can see we're actually downloading the Docker package from BOK11. Once this completes, we'll run the command to make the directory, and then we'll start the Docker. Okay, so the download completed successfully. Now we can run the command to make the directory. We're simply making a folder called x1. So now we're going to copy and paste the command to start the Docker. Once we start the Docker, we're essentially going to be running the node. Okay, and the Docker has started successfully. So the X1 node has successfully started and it's beginning to sync. Zensu noted that this took about 18 hours for the node to completely sync. Hopefully I have enough storage on this laptop. It only has a 256 gig SSD. We'll see how big the blockchain actually is. And that's something you're gonna to wanna to consider if you're considering running a node or a validator. As the blockchain gets used, the size of the database continues to grow. When it grows, you need more storage to store the entire database. You can't just store part of the blockchain. You need to store the entire blockchain. And if you don't have enough storage on your computer or in your node, it's not gonna work. So we'll refer back now to the Zenpedia instructions. You'll see we have some nice commands things like checking the status of the service. You can start and stop the service if you need to restart your machine. You can see the logs by typing in this command. And then here's a bunch of different general commands that might be useful for running the Docker and maintaining the Docker. Typically, as new updates come out, the Docker gets downloaded. You have to download a new Docker and resync with the blockchain. And then at the bottom, there's some additional notes. You'll need to set the number of files that Opera can use. This can be done with this command. You can also check the number of open files with this command. I'll actually run these commands directly on the server. You want to make sure these values are set so you're not using too much CPU or memory when your Docker's running. It's also useful to have a swap file activated. If you're familiar with Windows, it's called a page file in Windows, but a swap file allows Linux to simulate the disk space as RAM, basically just uses storage as RAM and makes the process faster. But again, this will use more storage in your virtual machine or on your device. All right, so the node is currently syncing. I'm gonna let my laptop run overnight. Hopefully it completes the sync and we'll have a live node running. And then once the node fully syncs, we'll be able to see new blocks coming in live. We'll be able to see transaction data live. Maybe we'll write a Python script to see things like the gas price, the average gas price, and get an idea of what's happening on the network. And that's really all I have to say. We'll keep it short and sweet. If you guys have any questions at all, don't hesitate to ask me on Twitter. Feel free to shoot me an email at wes at treecitytrading.us. We're going to continue to grow. We'll keep streaming live. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Tree City Trading's out.